See these two very old people? These are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. And those two very old people on the other side of the bed are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. This is Mr. Bucket, and that is Mrs. Bucket. And right there is Charlie Bucket, their only son. Here you go, Grandpa Joe. Cabbage soup. Thanks. Oh, Every day, nothing but cabbage soup. Cheer me up, Charlie. Tell me, what's the chocolate news? Wonka's got a new Mara. Fudge whip on our mallow rice. Mallow with flavor shakers. Flavor shakers? Why? And hi to you, too. Been lying across from you in this bed for 17 years. And now you finally decide to say hi? George, she didn't say hi. She said flavor shifters, my. What do you mean, why? I don't know why. She didn't say hi, Ty, or why. She said flavor shifters, my. Sure, I'd love a slice of pie. Nobody's having pie, Dad. Just cabbage soup, as always. Oh. Papa, how many toothpaste caps do you introduce in the place of the toothpaste factory in your life? Well, as of last night, Charlie, my career total stands at four million two hundred forty-nine thousand eight hundred seventy-six. Half a steel world record. Close. I love some toast. Nobody's having toast, George. <laughs> you think the one day might be able to get a job at the toothpaste factory, Papa? For your sake? I hope not, Charlie. Now what kind of positive thinking is that? Charlie's gonna work for Mr. Wonka making chocolate powders. No, Grandpa Joe, don't go filling the boy's head with dreams of candy. Brandy? I'd love one. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say brandy, she said candy! I know, she's gonna give the kid a brandy. Candy. What? Candy! No need to yell, I'm right here. You've got to remember that Charlie's descendant to the long line of distinguished candy. But Wonka hasn't hired him once the smuggler spies those candy balloon recipes. Wonka was so angry. Why, he gathered all the workers together in one place and said, I'm sorry, you must all go home. And he locks the doors to the factory forever. So Mr. Wonka still makes the candies. I can smell them on my way to school. Yes, but no one goes in and no one comes out. Maybe the undead. Who knows? Grandpa Joe, you're going to give Charlie nightmares again. Charlie wants to play gin? Play gin? I'm in. Charlie, would you go out and see if someone will let us borrow the newspaper? Sure, but you'll have to feed Grandpa George. Alright, here you go, Pop. Here's your cabbage soup. I thought we were playing gin. <laughs> See these kids? They meet outside Charlie's house every day after lunch with a shiny nickel and piece to buy a Wonka bar from the local candy man. The only kid with no nickel is Charlie.
yesterday's newspaper, but here you go. What's the world coming to when and we can't even afford a newspaper? Thanks, see ya. And the world tastes good, cause the candy man thinks it should. Charlie, come eat. Well, I'll be a chocolate crispy. Would you take a look at this? Wonka factory to be open to lucky few. You mean they're actually going to let people back into the factory again? Read what it says. Mr. Willy Wonka has decided to allow five children to visit his world famous chocolate factory. The lucky five will tour the factory and receive a lifetime supply of chocolate. Tour the factory? Read on! Five golden tickets have been hidden among 50 million ordinary candy bars. That's a million to one. Wow. I don't like the odds. <laughs> the five that's under golden tickets will win the toy and the chocolate. <laughs> what are you all talking about? Wonka's having a contest. Who is? Wonka. What about him? He's, He's having, having a contest. All right, all right. I'm not deaf, you know. Those golden tickets could be anywhere. How exciting! I wonder if any of them have been found yet. That paper's a day old. Charlie, could you imagine winning? Touring the factory. Meeting Mr. Wonka. Uh, seeing for yourself those undead zombie workers. Eating a lifetime supply of chocolate. Eating a lifetime supply of chocolate. One o'clock already? Charlie, you'd better hurry. You'll be late for school. <coughs> Back to the twists and turns to take this down for me. Goodbye, Mr. Bucket. Goodbye, Mr. Bucket. Sorry, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Now remember, we may be starving. Starving. We may be poor. Poorer than church mice. But the Bucket family always thinks positive. Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> yes, Grandpa George. Come over here. Come on over. Okay, Grandpa George, what is it? Remember, we may be starving. George, we already did that. We may be poor. Yes, Grandpa George. But the Bucket family always thinks positive. I know, Grandpa George, I know. How do you know I was going to say that? Write it down in purple ink, Charlie. If it's in purple ink, you'll never forget. Now that's positive. Huh? Mr. Bucket was on his way back to the toothpaste factory while little Tolly Bucket started his uphill trek towards school. But on his way, he heard some exciting news. Did you hear? Some kid found the first golden ticket. Already? When? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
and gentlemen, in the past hour, a second golden ticket has been found, this time on the other side of the world. We're here at our live room in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where the world is suddenly sweet from its erotica songs. That's the room in Brazil. The room called the room. I understand you sweetened Veronica's chances with a little assistance. I said for Ruby, moron. Yes, ma'am, I did. Because my daughter here is a very special young girl. Very special. As soon as she told me she wanted one of them bad golden tickets, I just had I went nuts buying about hundreds. By thousands, Zach, by the tens of thousands. You're right, baby. I must have bought them by the hundreds of thousands by the time I was done. You see, now I'm in the nut business. Peanuts, cashews, Brazils, macadamias. If it's nuts you want, we got them. Folks go nuts for our nuts. <laughs> Check us out daily at videowearnuts.com. This got me, Jack. They want to know about my ticket, not your macadamias. <laughs> You're right, baby. You're right. Check us out at one of nuts.com. Take it, Mr. Salt. So, I went, I bought a hundred thousand Wonka bars, and after days of showing trouble, my happy girlies finally found the lousy golden tickets. I, I rewarded her by letting her take the, take the chocolate home to her 17 children. I didn't have the heart not to, you know what I mean? How philanthropic. Daddy, he's being sarcastic! Rapidly turning sour. With nuts. Don't forget the nuts. <laughs> it seems you can't have the chocolate without the nuts. Good luck, it's Veronica. It's
The Bucket family went to bed with a horrible rumbling in their tummies that night. Charlie felt it worst of all. But once a year, Charlie got a very special treat. Surprise! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Charlie! Surprise! Happy birthday, Charlie. We already said that. You did? Man. I'll just give him his present. Yes, he's very pleasant. Present, present, present! present. Here you go, my love. Best of them all, a real little, carefully whipped at 2700 RPMs for precisely 60.23 seconds. Grandpa, please. I thought we agreed to get him another ribbon. Fudge Val is the best, and you know it. Another ribbon. Fudge Val, all. Another ribbon, another ribbon, another ribbon. And I think he's terrific, too. Happy birthday, Charlie. It's <laughs> Charlie's day.
thousand bars an hour, and this just in, a fourth golden ticket has been located in Television City, California. Leaving only the fifth and final golden ticket to be found, we're here at the home of Mike TV, lucky, with, lucky ticket winner number four. Now, Miss TV, tell us about finding the golden ticket. Well, you see, Mike and I were- Cut the chit chat, Ma. Didn't I tell you to never interrupt? Ooh, this is the best part. Crack, smack, whack, dead. Did you see that guy die? That was so totally awesome. So we gather, Mike. Now, please tell us- Zip it. The next show's a suicide bomb, dude. Hold on, it's my phone. Talk to me. Hold on, I got another call. Talk to me. Mike, we'd like you to tell our audience about finding the gold. Can't you see I'm trying to run an empire here? All right, I gotta go. Catch you later. Oprah, what do you want? Mike, can you please tell us about your golden? Hold on. Ooh, do you play we? I'm the best, dude, the best. Mike has certain focus issues. So I see. Now, Mike, please tell us about finding your golden ticket. Sure, I found this big shiny ticket, dog. Big deal. Just means I have to waste half a day touring some stupid chocolate factory. Ah, hold on. All right, Oprah, baby, I gotta change the channel. Oh, check it out! Now, what school does our latest ticket winner attend? School? Are you joking or are you just crazy? Who needs school? I got the net, my TV, and the Game Boy, fool. Some kids like it like you're crazy, some kids like you hear the brains and burn the I'll tell you what, 
We'll do it together. A lifetime supply of chocolate. Three, two, one. Nothing. A good thing, really. Chocolate's very fattening. You're right, right. A lifetime supply of it, you'd be the size of a dome on Capitol Hill. <laughs> I wish I'd never heard of candy or Wonka. Cheer up, Charlie. Give me a smile. What happened to that smile I used to? has always been my sunshine, but the sunshine Scraping together enough food to keep their hunger at bay for another long, cold day as winter tightened its grip. Mr. Bucket searched for odd jobs like shoveling snow as little Charlie Bucket began his uphill trip towards school. Charlie, would you grab those nut crunches for me? I wouldn't want them to freeze. Sure. Hey, look. There's a point like right there in the snow. A silver dollar? I think you must have dropped this. Wow, a silver dollar? It's not mine. Why don't you take it home to your book? I think I should. Maybe I should go to the grocery store. Charlie, that coin's probably been buried in the snow for weeks. Take it. And take this for being such a good kid. It's so good. A perfect blend of Belgian dark chocolate and a new world life with some overtones of Moroccan espresso. What is a genius? <laughs> well, thanks. I better get to school. Do you think 
I could have just one more, and this time I'll pay for it. Why not? Boss is pretty tight on inventory, though, so what'll be? Well, I think I'll share this with my family. Grandpa Joe likes Google from his budget on the line, but Grandma Josephine likes the Notarific. Well, why don't you try this? The Global Scrumptious and Unerific Totally Twisted Combo Bar. Just stop. And I know you're going to take it home to your family and all, but why don't you taste, take taste? Just see if you like it, too.
are coming to you live outside the gates of the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory, where history is about to be made. We've been told that Mr. Willy Wonka himself will soon emerge from behind these mysterious gates. It seems something's happening. Yes, yes, here he comes. Mr. Willy Wonka, the chocolate, chocolate genius of the century. Touch malign a sign. Touch 
That pipe leads to the strawberry dipping room. Strawberry dipping room? Where you will be heated to a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> or is that Celsius? I do mix the two up so often, with tragic consequences. <laughs> you'll be mashed like a marshmallow. It's impossible. Pipes go nowhere near the marshmallow room. Will somebody please accompany Mrs. Luke to the strawberry dipping room? And when you get there, take a long, sharp stick and start poking around in there. You'll find them there eventually. But hurry. If you don't, you might be poured into the fudge boiler. And that would be a terrible tragedy. Could damage the machinery. Oh, Augustus would be damaged too. Frog Loop, Augustus was damaged a long, long time ago. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it would be the waste of chocolate. Well then, why don't we proceed with our tour? Here we are, the nerve center of my entire factory, the inventing room. But before we visit the inventing room, we're going to take the next part of our journey by boat. Please step up and in, watch your step. Exactly. <laughs> hey Wonka, where the heck are you taking us? 
This is the nerve center of my entire factory. Each one of my inventions, my most secret inventions, are cooking and simmering in here. Gummy gourmet gobstopper. It looks like gum. That's because it is gum. Gum. The most dazzling gum in the world. Oh no. An entire three course meal without any of those nasty calories. Gum. Unfortunately, it hasn't been perfected yet, so we must not chew it.
Where's Mr. Wonka and the kids? Oh, they left us behind. What's that, Grandpa Joe? Hello? Who's there? Shall we? Well, <laughs> I guess some little tiny taste wouldn't do any harm. <laughs>
Uh, Sitting there at home on my couch, imagine watching a Wonka TV commercial. Try a Wonka bar, try it now. And poof, just one flick of this switch, and there it is right in your lap. But we have not tested it yet, so therefore we cannot touch it. Dude, watch me! I'm gonna be on TV! <laughs> <laughs>
Right, well, I'm sure you guys can find your way out from here. Well, so you mean that's it? What about Charlie's lifetime supply of chocolate? Oh, yes, the lifetime supply of chocolate. All the chocolate will be delivered to all the gold ticket winners. Um, besides that, this day has been a total waste of my time and of chocolate. Thank you, goodbye. Wait a minute, Mr. Wonka. I don't deserve a lifetime supply of chocolate. I tasted the fizzy lifting drink and I broke the rules, and I'm very sorry. But thank you for the most wonderful tour of your factory. It was better than Christmas. Bless you, Charlie. You just did. Did what, Mr. Wonka? You did it! Charlie, I created this competition to find a new candy maker, to make new candy dreams come true. I don't understand. Each one of the rooms that I designed were designed specifically to tempt each child. And you did something extraordinary. You gave a temptation, you were smart enough not to get caught, and yet you admitted your guilt. Thank you, Charlie. Well, now see here, it was my fault. I was the one that suggested we take a sip of the fizzy lifting drink. Ah, oh, so you're both to, bl both to blame. But we don't have any time for that. Come along, I have important things to show you. Does that mean you're in trouble, Mr. Wonka? I'm not. But you may. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Now, Charlie, press that button. No! Not that button. <laughs> that button. Where are you taking us? I have a tour of Brazil. That tour was just cotton candy and treacle. This tour, our tour, is just the beginning. Now, Charlie, press that button. No, 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 not that button. That Good. Now, hold on tight. We're going up and out. Up and out? Up and out. Yes! Hold on! Here we go! Charlie, 
How much do you love my factory? I think it's the most wonderful and fantastic and amazing place in the whole wide world. I'm glad to hear you say that. From this moment on, it's all yours. Well, I, I loved you, Mr. Wonka, but I can't leave my mom and dad and my grandma Josephine. You don't have to. Look! Mom, Dad! Grandma and Grandpa! What does this mean, Mr. Wonka? It means they can move in with you into the factory. So what do you say now, Charlie? I say yes! 